Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we will be talking about the Retribution Paladin on the Shadowlands beta. This spec has received a lot of changes, a bunch of abilities have been made baseline, we got some new talents, um, so I'm looking forward to actually talking about this. Before we jump into the video, I wanted to mention that my Patreon is back up, so if you're enjoying these class previews and want to see more content, uh, you can check it out, the link to it is in the description box. First up, let's talk about the class changes because there are quite a few. First of all, we do have Blessing of Sacrifice back in the toolkit, which is extremely strong both in raiding and mythic plus and probably even more strong in PvP. Um, super good utility spell and I'm glad to see it make a return. Then you probably noticed that auras are also back. So we get Crusader Aura, works the same way as before. Devotion Aura works the same way as before, it's 3% DR. Um, concentration aura again works the same way as before probably not too much use in pve but pretty decent in pvp for your healer and then retribution aura has been reworked now whenever a party member dies within 40 yards of you you gain wings for 12 seconds on paper this sounds absolutely amazing because both in mythic plus and in raids people tend to die quite often the downside of this is that the way they implemented it doesn't make too much sense. So for example, if you have wings up that last normally 20 seconds, you just pop them, then someone instantly dies. Those 20 second wings will be overridden with a 12 second wings. So in practice, it doesn't make much sense. I'd like to see it work where you just gain 12 seconds of wings additional to whatever you have active. So let's say you have five seconds of wings left, someone dies, it goes up to 17 seconds because you just gained 12 seconds. So assuming that they fix that, Red Aura could be pretty strong. A bunch of abilities have been made baseline that were previously talents. For example, Word of Glory, previously a talent, is now baseline. It costs three holy power to cast. They rework the way it actually heals. It's no longer a smart heal that heals three targets. It's a purely single target heal and it does significantly less healing than it did in BFA. However, they implemented a talent that will kind of make up for that. Hammer of Wrath, again, new baseline ability that used to be a talent, same, works the same way as it did previously. Uh, you can use it either during Execute or during Wings. Shield of Righteous, um, costs three Holy Power, requires a shield active to cast. Pretty much don't worry about even putting it on your action bars, just leave it in the spellbook for now probably. Um, then we also got Consecration, Baseline. They reworked how it actually functions, you no longer get Holy Power from casting it, um, it's, it's just AoE damage. It's super super weak at the moment, so probably not worth using unless literally every single other spell is on cooldown, so don't worry about it too much. Then we also got Turn Evil, which will probably make an appearance in PvP and probably in some Mythic Plus dungeons. But outside of that, Turn Evil is generally not super useful in raiding. Um, but in PvP, there are new situations where it's pretty powerful. So for Retribution specific abilities, Wake of Ashes is now baseline. Um, the change to it is that it only generates 3 Holy Power now. And it also deals reduced damage to secondary targets. So it still does AoE damage, but you don't get as much benefit from it on AoE as you used to. And then another change to Divine Storm is that it's been target capped to five enemies. Um, and that's just part of the Shadowlands target capping that's going on. All right, next let's look at talents because this is where we have a bunch of changes. So in the second tier, um, Empyrean Power is a new talent. Crusader Strike is a 15% chance to make your next Divine Storm free and deal 25% additional damage. So it works in practice uh, very similarly to Divine Purpose, except that it's only triggered by Crusader Strike and it only affects your Divine Storm. Then in the level 40 row, as you can see, Divine Purpose has been moved here from the last tier. Um, it still works the same way. And then we got two new talents in this row since both Consecration and Wake of Ashes are now baseline. Uh, first one is Holy Avenger. Your Holy Power generation is tripled for 20 seconds and it's a three minute cooldown. Unfortunately, it doesn't line up with our wings. So in practice, it's not as good as it sounds. If they made it 
three minute cooldown, it would probably be worth taking, but currently it's a little finicky and probably not worth playing. Then Seraphim is a new talent as well. They did remove Inquisition, so Seraphim basically replaces that. It costs three holy power, it has a 45 second cooldown, so it lines up with Wake of Ashes, but it is a little tricky to line up with some of our other abilities and talents, such as Execution Sentence, and then in the last year, Final Reckoning, which I will mention in a little bit. And the new Seraphim just gives you 8% haste, crit, and versatility, and then 13% mastery for 15 seconds. So it's just a little damage amp that you get every 45 seconds. In our second to last row, since Word of Glory is now baseline, we get a new talent called Healing Hands. And this causes your Lay on Hands ability to get CDR based on how low the target was whenever you Lay on Hands them. However, this is not the powerful part of the talent in my opinion. It also causes your Word of Glory's healing to be increased by up to 200% based on the target's missing health. Super strong in PvP and also in any other scenario where someone's about to die and you can quickly snipe them with a Word of Glory to almost top them off in a single cast. Then in the last row, we have two new talents. First one is Sanctified Rat. Avenging Rat lasts 25% longer, and during wings, each holy power spent causes you to explode with holy light, dealing damage to nearby enemies. Unfortunately, this sounds good as like an AoE talent, but the damage that you deal to nearby enemies is super low, and unless they buff it, I honestly don't see us using this talent too much. Then a new talent that we got is Final Reckoning. It has a 30 yard range, 1 minute cooldown. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, it's an AoE targeted ability that you can call down, and it hits all enemies within the marker. It reads, call down a blast of heavenly energy, dealing holy damage to all targets within the target area and causing them to take 50% increased damage from your holy power abilities for 8 seconds. While off cooldown, your attacks have a high chance to call down a bolt that deals holy damage and causes the target to take 10% increased damage from your next holy power ability. So it only lasts for 8 seconds, the damage amp, but it does pair nicely with some of our other cooldowns. Next let's talk about the legendaries, and first up we have of Dusk and Dawn. When you reach 5 holy power, you gain Blessing of Dawn. When you reach 0 holy power, you gain Blessing of Dusk. Um, at dawn, you get 6% uh, extra damage and healing. At dusk, you get 6% damage reduction, and both, they both last 10 seconds. So this basically incentivizes you to build up to 5 holy power very quickly, and then spend it, then wait around a little bit until some of your cooldowns come back up, then build up to 5 holy power quickly, uh, and then spend it quickly. So instead of like just pressing all your buttons as they come off cooldown, you're going to want to essentially pool your holy power. Unfortunately, the effect is not strong enough, so maybe if they made it a little stronger, 10%, maybe 15%, um, it might be worth using it, but currently it's a cool design, but it just doesn't work out uh, well enough. Next, we have Tempest of the Lightbringer. Projects Divine Storm forward 20 yards, damaging all enemies in its path. Also increases the damage dealt by Divine Storm by 20%. Uh, in reality, this legendary just increases your Divine Storm damage by 20%. Uh, projecting it forward is typically not going to help you out too much since it's already capped at 5 targets, um, and it's pretty rare that you can't hit all your targets with Divine Storm. Next we have Final Verdict. Replaces Templar's Verdict with Final Verdict, a devastating strike that deals extra holy damage, and has a 50% chance to activate Hammer of Wrath and reset its cooldown. So this essentially just makes it so you can sometimes press Hammer of Wrath even outside the execute range or outside of wings. So overall pretty decent um, and it's probably going to be the go-to legendary for single target. And then we have the Mad Paragon. Hammer of Wrath extends Avenging Wrath by one second and deals 25% additional damage. So this one used to be really good but it already got nerfed. Um, there used to be a build where you could keep wings up for a pretty extended amount of time, but in its current state, it's probably not going to see too much use. Next, let's talk about the Covenant abilities. So for Kyrian, we have Divine Toll. It's a 30 yard range, 1 minute cooldown. Instantly cast uh, Judgment on up to 5 targets within 30 yards. Um, this one is pretty strong on AoE because you get a Holy Power for each target hit. 
So if you have five targets nearby and you cast Divine Toll, you get five Holy Power. So it's a really good builder. And plus it also applies the Judgment debuff to all the targets it hits. So it also amps and gives you a little bit of an extra burst that you have. On single target, it's pretty weak, um, unfortunately. But for Mythic Plus, this might be a pretty strong contender. Next we have Ashen Hallow. It's a 4 minute cooldown and 1.5 and second cast. Hallow the target area for 30 seconds. Enemies in that area suffer shadow damage and allies are healed, reduced if there are more than 5 targets. Within the Hallow, you may use your Hammer of Wrath on any target and its damage is increased by 100%. So this one on single target and on raid fights is going to be actually pretty strong. One downside of this is that it's a 4 minute cooldown. Um, so you're going to line it up with every other wings, which means that the effect that allows you to use um, Hammer of Wrath on targets while they're in the Hallow gets mostly wasted because you're also able to use Hammer of Wrath during your wings. So this ability lasts 30 seconds, so you do get 10 second extra window where you can use um, Hammer of Wrath, but the major upside of this is that it does a lot of damage for single target and it also increases the damage of your hammer of wrath so overall this ability is going to be quite strong for raiding then for necrolord we have vanquisher's hammer which costs one holy power and has a 30 second cooldown throws a hammer at your target dealing shadow damage and empowering your next templar's verdict to automatically trigger divine storm this ability on paper might seem kind of cool, um, basically every 30 seconds you get a free Divine Storm, however in practice it's not all that great. So if you think about it, on single target you're going to be using Templar's Verdict uh, no matter what, so you proc a Divine Storm. That's not going to help you much on single target. In AoE situations, um, instead of pressing a Divine Storm, you would press Templar's Verdict to get the free Divine Storm, so you're getting a free Templar's Verdict. I would much rather see it duplicate the ability that you press next. So, for example, if you throw the hammer and then hit Divine Storm, then you get two Divine Storms. If you hit uh, Templar's Verdict, then you get double Templar's Verdict. So it gives you better and more optimal damage in the situation that you actually require it in. So instead of being like, all right, in all situations, it's good in single target and good in AoE, depending um, on what button you press and you get to make that choice. And then for Night Fate, we have the Blessing of Seasons. And this is essentially four different abilities combined into one. You get Blessing of Summer, Blessing of Autumn, Blessing of Winter, and Blessing of Spring. And each of those do something different. Keep in mind that you can put these buffs on anyone or yourself. So Blessing of Summer causes um, allies or yourself to deal extra damage as holy damage whenever you attack. Um, Autumn causes your abilities to recover 30% faster, which is kind of cool. Then we have Blessing of Winter, which causes your attacks to deal frost damage and slow your enemies. Then Blessing of Spring causes your targets to deal extra healing and receive extra healing. So this one is kind of tricky to use because each of the blessings you want to cast on someone else, for example. Summer is really good to cast on yourself. Autumn can be good on yourself, but there's probably classes that benefit from it way more than Red Paladins. Then you have Winter, which is probably the least useful out of them. I'm not exactly sure how much damage it does. And then Spring, you want to cast either on your healers to deal extra healing, or on your tanks to receive extra healing. Next, let's talk about Conduits, and I will only talk about the potency ones for now. First one is Expurge. Your Blade of Justice critical hits uh, cause the target to burn for 20% of the damage dealt every 2 seconds over 6 seconds, and the damage skills with Conduit rank. Um, currently, kind of weak. Probably on single target you still play it, but on AoE it's kind of a dead Conduit. Then we have Templar's Vindication. Templar's Verdict has a 15% chance to strike again for 15% of its damage. Currently this one is slightly bugged, and also 15% of the extra damage is super low. So even on pure single target, where you're never spending abilities or holy power on Divine Storm, that proc rate is still low and the damage uh, percent that you get from it is super low. So I really wish that they made this a little bit higher damage, maybe 25-30% at least, uh, to be playable. 
Then we have Truth's Wake. Wake of Ashes burns the target for additional 10% damage over 6 seconds. This is good both in single target and AoE. It just amps up our Wake of Ashes a little bit. And then we have Virtuous Command. Judgment grants you Seal of Command for 4 seconds, granting your Templar's Verdict, Crusader Strike, Blade of Justice, and Weapon a 10% chance of dealing 10% additional Holy Damage. So as you can see, all of these are super boring, but they just amp up our toolkit a little bit to deal more damage. So overall, not much choice, unfortunately. Um, I would have liked to see some more active conduits that actually change our playstyle, even if only a little bit. Um, but the retribution ones seem to be mostly just passive effects that you slot them into your conduit slots and then absolutely forget about them. Next, let's talk about the gameplay and how Red Paladin actually feels to play. In its current state, Retribution revolves entirely around lining up cooldowns. That's uh, Wings, Final Reckoning, Seraphim, and Execution Sentence. And that will allow you for a pretty major burst. Um, and then every time you have Wings up, you're able to line everything back up. And outside of that, every minute you get a smaller burst window uh, just with Execution Sentence, Final Reckoning, and Seraphim. So it revolves entirely around cooldowns, which in some cases it can be good, and in others it can be kind of annoying to play with. It is a lot of buttons that you need to press before you even deal any damage. So you need to Wings, you need to Seraphim, and then Rebuild Holy Power, then you need to Execution Sentence and Final Reckoning, and then you can do your huge burst for 8 seconds um, into whatever target that you hit. So when pulled off correctly, it is extremely satisfying and it also offers a ton of burst damage. But unfortunately, this also means that since we revolve around cooldowns, outside of cooldowns, it is very lackluster. So you're going to be pressing abilities so the rotation will feel fairly smooth even outside of cooldowns, but you're just not going to be doing damage. Um, and that is kind of the downside of having a bunch of cooldowns is that typically outside of those cooldowns you're not going to be doing much. But on the other hand, it is great for Mythic Plus for example where you can revolve um, and arrange big pools around having all your cooldowns up. Um, in Mythic Plus also where there's quite a bit of travel time, it gives you time to get your cooldowns back. So Red Paladin currently seems in a pretty good state for Mythic Plus. Um, however, for raiding, in most situations, it does seem a little weak just because of how cooldown oriented we are. Um, so there needs to be some sort of tuning. And another pretty major issue with Red Paladin are the legendaries, in my opinion. Um, both for single target and for AoE, the legendaries are fairly weak. Um, they essentially just amplify one of your abilities damage so they don't offer any type of gameplay interaction that you know changes how you do your rotation changes how you play on single target with the legendary um versus without the legendary instead they just cause you to deal slightly more damage um, and that is a very boring design to have for a class that's been pretty stagnant in how it plays since bfa so if you enjoy popping off every minute and then popping off even harder every two minutes, then Red Paladin is probably the class for you. It plays smoothly, there are very few empty globals, so you're going to be pressing a button basically every time um, that a global cooldown is up. The only thing that might turn you off of Red Paladin are the cooldowns and the fact that in its current state and with the current tuning, which is subject to change, you just need to press so many buttons similar to Unholy DK before you start doing any real damage. So the setup for your burst is a little tedious to do, but then the burst it, burst window itself, which is only 8 seconds, um, is super satisfying. So if you enjoy that type of playstyle, then Red Paladin might be for you. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about Red Paladin? Do you like the changes they made, especially to the talent tree? And more importantly, to the legendaries. I really wish that Red Paladin had more choices in that uh, matter. 
but unfortunately it does seem like tuning hasn't been great and design hasn't been great either for legendaries. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.